On this week's episode of In An Instant, we're discussing what one could argue with relative ease is the best Instax Square camera ever produced. The Mint Instant Flex TL70 Plus is the modern mother of all twin lens reflex cameras, and only the second TLR ever produced for instant film, alongside its baby brother, the TL70, which shoots Instax Mini. Today, we're gonna dive into this masterwork from Mint Camera and dig down into exactly why it's worth the space it occupies on planet Earth a kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. This is such a serious camera to shoot the smallest format available of instant film with. Part of this was tough timing. Pretty much right after this camera was released, the Instax Square format hit the market. I think in retrospect, they would have made this an Instax Square camera instead. We did it again. We summoned a camera into existence using only YouTube light witchcraft and repeating the phrase light as a feather, stiff as a board, light as a feather, stiff as a board. Welcome to In An Instant, my name is Ben and on this episode, we are breaking down the Mint Instant Flex TL70 Plus, a twin lens reflex instant camera with fully manual controls, beautiful lensing and a refined design though it is resolutely dump truck. At first glance, the TL70 has got a serious wagon. She's thick and she's wearing it well. Just to get some terms out of the way, a TLR or twin lens reflex camera is a camera with two optically paired lenses, one that exposes the image with a shutter and another that is simply for viewing the composition, typically with a pop-up hood and magnifier for critical focusing. Both lenses move as one to accurately reflect through the viewing lens what you're focusing on with the taking lens. Unlike more widely produced single lens reflex cameras or SLRs, which require a moving mirror to relay light to your viewfinder, TLRs are more mechanically simple and they are among the most iconographic camera styles in the history of image capture. Save for a few unique projects over the years, TLRs have been mostly discontinued as a style of camera until Mint introduced the Instant Flex TL70 in 2015, which veered closer to traditional TLR bodies thanks to the fact that it shoots Instax mini film, which is a similar size to medium format. A predominant amount of TLRs across photographic history accepted the medium format 120 size, but to accommodate the larger scale of Instax square film, this sequel camera has taken on a muscular physique that one can certainly label as a certified doinker. I'm proud of it. If you encounter this beast in a back alley, it may be your final day being around. There's certainly something in the air with regard to people wanting to control aperture and shutter speed on their instant cameras. How novel. In a year which produced the very first fully manual Polaroid compatible camera, Mint has delivered a fully manual Instax square body. Shutter speeds are programmable using a dial on the side of the camera, while aperture is manipulated with a wheel beneath the taking lens. With a maximum aperture of f5.6, the camera is a real bokeh blaster, allowing you to throw backgrounds into creamy blur with pretty dang sharp in-focus areas even wide open at 5.6. The 70 millimeter lens purportedly has a glass element, though it's unclear exactly what that means, and the optics produce a really lovely image that takes full advantage of Instax's resolving power. On a lens like this, Instax film is not only sharp and clear, but it's also given its due. As it's more commonly used with lower end point and shoot cameras with fixed apertures and flash that can't be toggled off. Inside the TL70 Plus, the film can truly sing, and although I find Instax very challenging to use given its severely limited dynamic range, in controlled situations I found this camera to really hold its place in my arsenal. Because of the limited distance the lens can move away from the camera body, the minimum focusing distance on the TL70 Plus is 0.7 meters, or 2.3 feet, which is decent, but certainly not something you're gonna write letters home to mom about that she'll absolutely never respond to. Thankfully, Mint has also produced a close-up adapter, which allows you to get as close as seven inches. This is a lovely way to use the camera on smaller objects you'd like to fill the frame, or the face of your puppy, Fern, who needs a boop on the snoot. Click the like button below to give her one boop on the snoot. Due to the high speed of Instax film at 800 ASA, the set of ND filters is also a necessity and attached the same way as the close-up filter. The ND set allows you to rate Instax at 100 ASA, so you can use wide open apertures in broad daylight. 
Like I said, while the Instax film stock is not typically my cup of tea, actually don't drink tea and find it kind of disturbing, my wife Lauren and I have been doing our fair share of photography events to promote our new studio, Analog on Hudson, and the TL70 has been a crucial camera in our roster for its flexibility, quality, and frankly, its design. The TLR aesthetic, the satisfying pop of the hood, the image ejecting through that hood. It's all very attractive, engaging, and interesting to people, and it's a great conversation piece. And it simply makes the camera fun to bring around, which is often half the battle with cameras. It fits so nicely within the love language of vintage camera design, and I think Mint has really pulled off something that will stand the test of time here. The experience of using the waist level finder is also really primo and a very attractive feature of TLRs in general. The TL70s even includes a frame counter and a reading of your current settings inside the finder, which is another one of those touches that makes this camera really feel like the complete package. The only notable shortcoming here is its internal light meter, which lacks accuracy and makes it challenging to operate the camera in automatic mode. For me, it's not an inconvenience since I only use this in manual mode, sort of a primary selling point for it in the first place, but it's just something to keep an eye on. I otherwise feel Mint has really quote unquote done the thing. At $700 USD, this camera is mostly for passionate diehards and professionals looking for an instant film side piece. As I've belabored over the last year, which has seen an influx of higher end instant cameras, high quality cameras are not $200 toys and they command a commensurate asking price. Mint, which is a pretty small company, has managed to crank out several pro level cameras at an almost bespoke scale, making the sheer quality and practical value of their creations even more impressive to me. They are also chopping away at the front lines of a new 35 millimeter camera modeled after the Roly 35 a legendarily small scale focus camera that Mint is looking to inject with LiDAR autofocusing. That's yet another project that challenges the notion of what is thought to be possible in modern film camera manufacturing. So shout out to Mint. They're really holding it down in the film photography hardware game. And uh, I can't stress that enough. I'm un simply unable to stress it further. And all that being said, let's hit the pros and cons. Pros, fully manual control. Unlike the original TL70, which was an aperture priority camera, the TL70 Plus offers more control than almost any other Instax Square shooting camera. Other than the similarly priced Nons SLR series and the SF70, which is Mint's rangefinder style Instax Square camera. I certainly prefer the TL70 Plus when compared to the SF70, by the way. And build quality. This is sort of a way of summarizing the various tactile delights of this camera, but the bottom line is it feels great. The parts feel durable. There's a lot of plastic, but it's high quality stuff that has stayed in great shape through pretty heavy use. And the lens. As you know, the camera doesn't matter unless the lens is worth a damn. And this is worth several dams, possibly even a damn, and certainly a damn Daniel. Being able to shoot at f5.6 surpasses the capabilities of any other fixed lens instant camera, and it goes bonkers in yonkers. And cons, like I said, the light meter. Uh, it's not accurate, at least in my copy, and tends to overexpose, but it's not a factor if you use the camera manually. Other than that, there really aren't any other cons other than I wish there was maybe a way to carry the filters more elegantly. It's a bit clumsy carrying the NDs and close-up filter in a separate case, and I don't know, maybe some sort of holster in the back of the camera could have been a nice solution for carrying around a few of those, since they really are a necessity. Certainly would have made the camera bulkier, but it's already a chungus, so I wouldn't have minded. And with that pretty dated use of the word chungus, let's wrap up this episode of In An Instant. Thank you for watching. Please go ahead and reflex your twins on that subscribe button. And yes, I've been fighting the urge to talk about the Miller Life Twins commercial. Hanging with my friends and twins. Stay tuned for more reviews, breakdowns, shoots, and all things instant. Bye.